Hey, hey, Ricardo here from Uplifted Consulting. Today we're going to see how to build a productivity system right within um, Airtable using Airtable and a couple of automations, a couple of simple automation so that you can track uh, your hours, what you do uh, during each hours of the day. So you can manage your productivity a little bit better. You can do that also for your own employees if you wanted to. And then you can also track daily inputs so you know for example, how many sales calls did you book that specific day? And you can also have a track of those kind of metrics and collect those every single day. So at the end of the day, we will be able to look at different interfaces like the following, uh, which activity details and different things. So you can make a better decision on how to spend your day. What are, where are days where you didn't work a lot? and the face of the nature. So without further ado, let's get started and let's get started with the build out. Uh, keep in mind that I will also send a link down here of the finished build out that I have over here so that you can use that uh, together with the automations that we created over here. But if you want to follow along, if you want to implement uh, additional stuff, you can do that. Um, you can do that here. Um, so we'll start off by creating the, uh, the tree uh, main um, the three main tables. So first off, we have work forms, and the idea behind work forms is that every um, every single hour you fill a work form, and in the work form you say uh, what is the activity that you work on. So what is the type of work that you did? What is the hour uh, that you filled, and uh, uh, what you did during that hour? So um, we will do that in the following way. Here we will add full name and then we will add uh, what you did. Okay, we remove our sign it and then here we do type of work and then we can create a couple types. So content creation, sales, uh, marketing, operations, client work. Okay, so we have that. Now we also track the hour. This will be a number. And uh, yeah, I'm going I'm going pretty fast with, with this uh, since uh, this is a pretty simple setup that we need to do with inner table. Those are, are the things. Uh, yeah, those are the, the initial things that we will need. We will also need the date, which is very important. Uh, date. Uh, here uh, we always choose uh, ISO format, uh, which is uh, better to look at. Word forms, uh, then here we have daily inputs. Uh, and uh, the idea behind that is uh, here you can track uh, um, you can track the inputs uh, that you want to track uh, that move your business forward. So let's say here you want to track uh, things such as uh, cold email sent. Uh, you want to track uh, LinkedIn post published or created or different um, sales called booked, uh, this is information like that. So we will add a couple of fields over here. So we call, uh, we will add the cold email sent. Then we will add the YouTube video published. Those are main metrics that you can look at each day that actually move your business forward. What you can also have if you wanted to is you can have a, a personal metrics if you if you want to track that uh, within the end of day um, end of day format, so in that way you can actually um, you can actually also track things such as workout uh, using a, a checkbox as an example, or meditation using again a checkbox, and so you you have both uh, uh, business metrics as well as personal metrics over here. The last one is um, the last one that we created is uh, I call it uh, starting metrics. So starting metrics, but uh, uh, really this uh, what this is is uh, a helper uh, table. So we use helper tables for a specific reason, and that is because uh, um, if we wanna add uh, additional information together. It's difficult to do that within a single table. And if we want to format the data in specific ways, we cannot do that. Uh, for example, with the daily inputs, if we want to, if we want to format the data and have something like, uh, what is uh, the uh, amount of uh, YouTube videos that we want to do each year? So um, 
we cannot do that easily just with the daily input information. So we need to actually pour the data outside and to perform some calculation on that. So what I did over here is um, I create a standard um, standard um, record. So there's only one record over here and then um, we add the metrics uh, such as the following YouTube goal. Uh, so let's say yearly YouTube goal, all videos created. And then what we can do is uh, we can associate the daily inputs to the starting metrics uh, and also the work form to the starting metrics so that everything is connected. Uh, so what we will do is we will link, uh, link the daily inputs. And um, what we will do is we will uh, link uh, all the, um, all the inputs to the same, um, all the inputs to the same study metric. If you are using a single person, if you are using more people, you can um, you can do that for more people. But in our case, uh, we will use a single person. So here, for example, we have three dates, and then what we um, yeah we will add the three daily inputs over here. So what we can see, uh, let me put a couple of more reasonable, uh, more reasonable metrics over here. So we can create a total videos created use a roll up. So use daily inputs and then uh, we create a sum. So here we have uh, the total videos created and then what we can do is we can create a formula such as uh, uh, YouTube completion percentage. So in this way, when, uh, uh, using the formula, we can, uh, we can track uh, total number of videos created uh, divided by YouTube goal, and then we can format it as a uh, percent. This is uh, um, the way we track uh, our goals over here. Okay, now we have uh, the initial structure over here. What we need to do now is create the actual form that we will use. We will likely use two forms. We use a word form, which uh, is used to track uh, every different uh, um, every different hour. So the idea here is uh, set a timer for one hour and then use the form like the following. And I will show you mine. This is uh, how I create that. This is pretty simple full name, date, uh, hour, and type of work, and what you did in this six, uh, 60 minutes. Okay, yeah, so we created uh, the, the form, the form number one. Now let's also create the form number two. Okay, yeah, and um, this, is, uh, this is it. This is also the other form. Uh, right now, what we need to do is we need to set up uh, the automations within uh, uh, within make.com. So let's go uh, to make.com for the automation. The idea here is we use uh, either we use custom webhooks or we can also use uh, uh, Tally as uh, uh, the um, trigger here. And I think if we use this as a trigger, uh, this is uh, uh, auto created and we don't need to do anything. So uh, LD copy as an example, here we can select the form ID. And then uh, once this is actually selected, if we go back here, uh, yeah, as you can see, this is already created. So this is even simpler, um, even simpler using this. So. The, yeah, the structure here, pretty straightforward. What you do here is you just set up something like that. When you, uh, when a form is created, you create an Airtable record. And we create the record in the base that we defined. This is for daily inputs. And then here we can find the uh, metrics. So what I would suggest first is to test this out so we see um, we see the uh, what is the actual format of the submissions and things like that so what you do is you copy this and then you start filling this 
So let's uh, do something like that and let's test this out. Okay. And as you can see, this worked correctly. So here we have a fields and then within the fields we have, um, we have the various, uh, um, uh, the various fields as mentioned. So we can create that in the following way date called email sent uh we didn't we didn't create that but there's no uh, problem with that youtube videos linkedin so sales calls um here what you can do is you can map you can click on map and then you can check uh, uh, this one over here so in this way if this is true or this is false this is uh, added uh, automatically one thing here for starting metrics, uh, as I mentioned before, since we are just using one, it's uh, way better to um, check the name of the starting metric and use that uh, all the time. So let's say I use the record ID over here and uh, I get the record ID and add it over here so that every time this will be automatically added over here. Okay, so let's uh, test this out again. So date is today, let's say meditation, workout, uh, 12 videos, one, and then two. And then we submit here. This is submitted. Uh, this is not activated right now because we need to activate that. We use existing data and we created that. So if we go over here, um, as you can see, everything was created. And also as here, metrics were updated. So this is uh, uh, the first part. And then uh, what we need is we need to set up the word form. Format here is essentially the same as the one that we use. So we create a web book. This is for word form. And then we select the word form. Okay. So this is automatically created. Same thing here. We just create the report, uh, the record for uplifted uh, productivity copy. So yeah, in this instance, this is auto created. So this is even better uh, type of work. What it did. And then that's our Let's test this out. Uh, let's test this out. So tell it. So this should be connected correctly right now. Let's go here. Let's say name. Date. As you can see here that you can only put uh, this date. Type of work. Let's say content creation. Yeah. YouTube video creation. Click on submit, and uh, if we go over here, we process this data, and uh, this is processed correctly. So here, as you can see, this is also processed correctly. Now, a couple of things that you can do over here is you can create interfaces uh, uh, related to the productivity system. So let me show you a couple of examples here, productivity uh, dashboard. Let's use dashboards over here. So let's say uh, monthly productivity. And here we can do something like work blocks. And uh, let me, um, yeah, here we can use a chart. We can use a bar chart and we can say uh, hours of work uh, uh, per day. So in this way we can, uh, oh, we can check the number of hours work per day. In the x-axis, we put the date divided by day. So here, as you can see, this is divided by day. And uh, right now, obviously, we will just see this, but uh, we can also see additional um, additional groups. And also here, you can do a count, uh, and the count can be grouped by uh, type of work. So in this way, we can actually look at the different uh, types of work that has been done. So uh, let me uh, show you here. Um, an example, 
So here we um, we selected this. We created three blocks uh, with three different hours, uh, and we select uh, uh, something like that. Uh, if we go to the interface right now, as you can see, this is divided in the following way. And uh, here we can, uh, if we add uh, an additional date, so uh, if, for example, we say this is uh, on the 26th, this is our one. And we look at the interface right now. As you can see, this is divided by date. One other additional things that you can do if you wanted to is you can create a formula to check if this is in the current month or current week. So this is a formula that can be used over here. Uh, let me check one second the, um, the formula. So yeah, here it is. We use is same today date. So we check if today and the date are within the same month. Pretty simple. So same thing if we want to do a current week, for example, uh, we check whether the date is in the same week. So this is an example. So here, for example, if we change this to um, this, as you can see uh, from the 17th, this is not in the current week, but this is still in the current month. If we change this to the uh, 28th of May, this is uh, uh, not in the current month and not in the current week. So, um, yeah, so an example here of things that you can do, and um, you can add a filter over here if you wanted to, where you filter out for current month, for example, equal to one. So here you only see uh, the current month. So, yeah, this is uh, pretty much an example of how, uh, how this can be used. Another thing that I mentioned over here is that you can build uh, um, you can be goals. So I generally do that in, uh, um, in another kind of dashboard. So, um, I call it something like goals over here. So, um, goals. And, uh, um, this is using word blocks. So what we are doing here is we are using starting metrics and we use list for this. So, um, because list is uh, the um, the best uh, way to showcase this information, and here we can showcase YouTube completion, for example, and we can see the goal of YouTube, and then we can also see total YouTube videos created uh, total. So this is uh, like unfortunately there's no better way to see this kind of information. So that is uh, what it, you should do over here, and if we do the same for uh, LinkedIn. So let's, uh, let's also do, uh, total LinkedIn videos. Uh, yeah. So as you can see, this is 1%. And then if we wanted to, what we can do is we can duplicate this. We can put it down here. And then instead of uh, YouTube completion, you, we use LinkedIn completion as well as total LinkedIn posts. And then we remove those. So in this way, you can actually see, uh, yeah, see the metrics over here in uh, some sort of uh, um, percentage format or completion format like that. So, yeah, this is pretty much it when it comes to the old productivity setup. Let me know what you think. As, uh, as I mentioned, down here you can find the system. This can be applied to you, to your employees, or uh, whoever in your team. So you can track this different information and uh, can uh, have more and more features over time. So let me know what you think about that and have a nice day. Bye-bye.